M0FXP Hamtech. So if you listen here on my Kenwood D75, that's linked to the All Star system. So although it sounds like I'm talking on a normal repeater, I'm actually linked to the All Star system. I'm going to show you how this is done with the nodes, many nodes that people buy. So the basics are you need a Raspberry Pi. This one's a Raspberry Pi 3B. You need a CM108 sound card that looks like this. Okay, that's a CM108. And when you get it, you have to remove these two components. Also, you need to remove, get it nice and close here. It's quite hard to do this, but this component is actually marked C15. Let's have a look. No, R is not marked C15. Scratch that. Is that an R6 and R7? So it's this one and this one that needs to be removed. This component here needs to be removed and these two items. And there's also a, a, a surface that needs to be scratched. The trace needs to be scratched and to disconnect. I believe it's this terminal from this terminal. We'll show you that. You're also going to need a, a Bofeng AAA. So you take that apart. You pull the buttons off. There's a couple of turny things you have to unscrew. Take the battery off. And then this just lifts out. You've got two screws here and it just lifts out, okay? And when it lifts out, it looks like this. Just here, okay? Now you do have to undo three more screws. Was it four? To get the board off. One, two, three, four. I think there's one in the middle over there as well. Screw in the middle. You turn it over and you solder what they call the coswire, and we do it in white to a, a terminal on the back. This is the back side and you actually solder it here, just here, and that's the cos. The connections you're seeing on the down there are the red wire goes here, just by this little speaker connector. Then when you if you count up or down five, one, two, three, four, five, or up one, two, three, four, five, you solder the mic connector, which is the red wire here. This is earth, okay, so right by the black one there. That's your earth. So you've got an earth there. And then at the top here, the yellow wire, that comes from microphone, okay? The two resistors that you're seeing that you put between, or first, are 10, 10K, okay? The red wire that you're seeing here that I ran back to this power supply, called, where they call them buck converters, that's your live, okay? And it's picking up the earth on the same place here. Okay, now don't confuse it with this black wire up here, which is more for sound, okay? This one is for sound, okay? That's, no, this one, sorry, this one here. The one that goes to the 10K resistor, that's sound. It goes all the way to the CM108. The way we've managed to power both, now you can get one buck converter, put some resistors in line and power the whole thing from one. But yeah, but I've kept it simple. We've got one where you adjust the voltage, you turning this blue, this little screw here on the blue square. And you've got four volts going to my Bofun, triple eight. And you've got five volts going to the Raspberry Pi. And it's the first, if you look at where I've connected on the outside, live is the first pin and miss a pin, then the earth should be black really is the third pin in and that's giving you that powers your Raspberry Pi and then I just connected these two buck converters to you would just do it to a 12 volt supply but I've connected it to a cigarette lighter connector so that's that you'll see that here there's like a circle the microphone was there I pulled that off be careful not to damage this component when you do that that's probably the riskiest bit and yes, you can remove the antenna and just solder something in, but I've left the original antenna on for now. And yeah, 10K there. The LED, it is off. You just twist it, it just comes off. Okay.
So the Raspberry Pi, you don't do anything to it really hardware-wise apart from add some earthing points. And that I'm going to add some more on soon. And that stops that whining noise that you get. The more earth you have from the radio to the Pi and the shorter the wires, the less chance of that whiny noise that we hear sometimes. And I use Hubnet all the time and many, many people do go on there and have the whiny noise. But all they've got to do is add more earth and also keep it away from devices, you know, the, um, the other devices that are active because that makes it happen as well. Cool, yeah. You can see there going strong the hardest soldering i think is really the cm108 so we take that out probably damage it doing it because i'm not sure taking it out was a good idea actually i think i'll leave it in and just zoom in on it so it just goes into your usb i always use the middle top one there's two very fine wires that you have to solder and you can buy some coated wire but i I just use two bits of wire. One goes on the top left pin here, so you've got to be careful. And also, I will say that removing those pink and pink and green connectors, these ones, it's easier to actually heat them all up than using a soldering iron. If you use a soldering iron, it tends to rip the, for me, the pads off the board, and that's the riskiest thing. So I just got myself a heat basically a heat gun with attachments and that does the trick actually you can buy heat guns um, just want the finer attachments okay got sidetracked then so you can see that the yellow wire is going to go once i zoom out to this 10k resistor at the top but it's the third one in it's basically the one on the outside. One, two, three, you can count there. Just turn it round like so. Get all the wires out of the way. And like I said, keep your wires short. See it, the third one in. So the one on the outside, 10K resistor, then that goes to the yellow wire. And I would color code your wires, then you won't get confused. The red wire goes to, if we turn it around like this, as we said earlier, by the black speaker connector or microphone connector, just there. Black wire goes the fifth one from the top or from the bottom. That's the best way I find it, 10K resistor. And then this live here. And when you remove this, there's a pin poking through. You have to sort of, to get the board off, you have to solder it and it just lifts off. And then you can get rid of that board by, there's a screw underneath, and then that board just falls out. But basically you're powering the live here. That's the super important. You do have to get this radio, and then you could do it actually, the Bofung. You could connect it to your PC before you strip it all down and program a, a frequency that you're going to be using for your node because it is, you know, ultimately it's a radio and it needs to be programmed with a channel. And so I program 434 tone, okay? So you just plug into these two pins, but you can do it after you've modified it, but of course it's a lot easier if you do it before. The buck converters, they sell them on Amazon and eBay, the CM108s again. Now if you go to Bill on eBay, uh, G4XKR, he will make this bit for you. Yeah, he'll make the whole lot for you. He sells nodes. Yeah, there's one there. And also the very, very popular is the G7 RPG node, which it looks like this and, and comes out of the box ready to go. But so does Bill's ones as well. And this comes with a, a, a unique control panel. Uh, there are quite a few control panels you can use as well. So then you think, well, why do I need a control panel? Well, when you're changing all star rooms, you need a method of doing it, and one way is to use your PC or your browser on your phone, where you connect to these different control panels. You've got one there by Tech Minds, uh, that's Matt. You've got the Supermon, you've got Allscan, you've got Supermon 2, there's quite a few panels that do that. But anyway, back to assembly. So you connected your CM108. The, the modification that we were talking about, I didn't quite finish saying about that, did I? So you've got a very fine wire that I just coated with, actually, uh, I'll zoom in again. 
I coated mine with nail varnish, believe it or not, but it goes from the far left here and it reaches around. Now remember, you have to remove those components. If you look here, where this component was removed, which looks like this component, yeah? And then the, the wire is soldered on the right-hand side there and goes to that top left connector. So it's fine soldering. You have to be really careful. And then on the bottom left here, with the, remember the end, it enters hit on from this side, you can, it's the, it's the far outer one, which definitely makes it easier going across. It can't touch anything. And I've coated that in varnish. You can buy coated wire, by the way. And that goes to here where the red wire goes. So it's, a, the red wire is above the yellow wire. Okay, so yellow wire above is red. You've got your 1K resistor here. Which is this is quite a uh, quite a good way of doing it because you don't need many components when you do it this way. Um, so let me just show you the one K. You can get them in packs of like a hundred for a few pounds. One K resistor here that goes between these two pins here. Okay, and then if you see that line, that sort of scratch there, that's where it broke the tracks that join the middle pin with the bottom pin, and you have to do it with a Stanley knife. Just be careful. Then you've got the next cable in here. You've got the cos wire that goes all the way to that part where we, I'll show you in a sec, where we soldered. And then you've got the black cable, which is called speaker, I think. And that goes to, like I said, if you go back to the radio. And I'm sort of going over the same thing here. Fifth from the top. Yeah, so countdown. Now there is a modification to reduce the power of the Bofung. If you take it off, you have to remove a chip and then you just bypass it with a wire. There's quite a few videos showing you how to do it, but it's basically this chip here. Okay, and then they, they remove it and then they put a wire that effectively bypasses it. I haven't done that because I'm just, just messing around here. I'm not gonna use this node. It's just for fun and learning. The best thing about, well not the best thing, but one of the really cool things about building a node is um, you learn how the whole thing works. Now I haven't earthed this properly yet, but what I'll do, I will fire it up, because I've literally done this 10 minutes ago. There's one last big thing that takes time, and there's a few videos to watch as well. You've got G5 REV made a very good video uh, configuring the SD card with the Ham VoIP All Star image. You have to go to the All Star Ham Radio site and download the image and put it onto an SD card using either Bellina or Win32. That's basically like the brain that runs everything and links everything. It automatically, you know, it will ask you to update and then and then you can tell it to update whenever you want. So that's what runs everything. And there's some configuration where you enter your call sign, your node number, a password from All Star as well. So I know it all sounds a lot, it's all a bit daunting, but if you do it step by step, follow all the videos that people have made, um, you'll have your own All Star node. So let's just fire this one up and see what happens. I've set it on 434-100. And we've turned all the other nodes off. So we fire it up, you can see that the Raspberry Pi starts to flash, the buck converters light up. As soon as it kicks in, the radio will start to shout out the IP address, if I've done this correct. Make sure I turn the radio on. I've already configured the channel. Now, remember, it's going to have that whiny noise because... Um, let's turn it up. Because I haven't probably earthed it. Just need to add a few more, but it's gone into transmit now. Just let it do its thing. Zero F X B. So give it a go, try it out. Bye for now.